Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we're gonna set up our Mapbox Studio map style for Trenches of War. Now, previously we had set up a map style for Pocket Droids Go in another section. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on the styles tab at mapbox.com slash studio. And we're actually going to borrow from this Pocket Droids setup to create a whole nother map. So click on menu and we're going to click on duplicate. Now that we've successfully duplicated, let's head into this map. So the pocket droids copy. And we're going to go ahead and scroll in so that we can see some streets and kind of get a feel for what's going on here. Now, as you can see, our streets are really, really thick. That's from the pocket droids go settings, but we're not going to have to worry about that too much since all of our stuff is going to be pretty close quarters. What we are going to do, though, is make a few adjustments to our map theme to make it fit this other game a little bit better. First, let's go ahead and change this name. Let's change this to Drenches of War instead of Pocket Droids Copy. Our next step is we're going to adjust the colors just a bit. So let's go to Road Primary. And we're going to change this road color to B6, A7, A3. Let's leave the case as it was. And then we're gonna say building, and we're actually gonna leave the color alone, but we are gonna update the data. So click on select data, and we're gonna add to this type is not any of filter. So click on that, and then we're gonna say add new filter value. And we're gonna add public buildings, and then add new filter value. And we're going to add schools. And then we're going to add one more filter value. And we're going to take out hospitals. And essentially what this is doing is excluding public buildings, schools, and hospitals from our results for our buildings for our map style. And the reason for that is we're going to use those as some points of interest later on. Now for the water, we don't care too much about this water, so let's get rid of it. Let's click on style, I'm gonna click on water, and just press delete. And that's gonna leave us with our park and our background. Now for the park, let's update the color, and we're gonna change this to 449C63. And it's gonna be this darker green. And then for the background, we're gonna leave that alone. Background is just fine as it is. Cool. And really, that's all that we're going to do to this style. So we're good to go. It says that our changes are already live, so that's awesome. Let's go ahead and back out back to the main menu. Now we're going to click on menu, and I'm just going to grab this URL. And then we're going back to Unity, and we're going to drill down into the AR tabletop kit, into our map holder, into the map root, and we're going to add this to the image section. So by default, it's set to map box streets. We're going to go custom and we're going to insert that URL that we grabbed just a minute ago. And as far as the map image goes, we're done. That's now going to update the map that we saw to have the background based on the map we just created. And just as a brief overview of what's inside of the map route, we've got the abstract map script, which is what controls where our map's located, the zoom level, the extent type, tile providers, a whole bunch of different stuff, um, as well as where it's placed, what loading texture it should use, and your scaling options. The image is the map image. The terrain is the actual physical terrain of the location. It changes things like elevation, and we can update this however we want. For our game, we're going to be using flat terrain, but we could set it up with terrain with elevation, low poly terrain, or globe terrain, which are all really cool features. And we can even add colliders to our terrain, which is another obviously useful feature. And then we have the vector settings, and the vector is related to the layers that we're grabbing. So objects like buildings is what we're looking at here in the vector. 
Now we can change this to map box streets as opposed to map, so map box streets with building IDs, which is what we're going to do. And then we're going to take a look at the vector layer visualizers. And you'll notice by default, we have one visualizer. It's extruded buildings. And if we click on it, we can see that the layer name that it's associated to is building. And it's got a collider type. And we're going to go ahead and set that to box collider just so things don't go running through our buildings because that's not what we want. And then we've got an extrusion type. We're going to leave this on property height, but they do have a couple of different options for min height, max height. You can set a range between to kind of clamp the height of the buildings or an absolute height, which makes every building the same size that you set. And you can also set whether or not you want just the roof or just the side or the roof and the side of these buildings. We can also adjust the texturing type and the materials used for roofs and walls. We're going to leave these with the pre-provided map box styles. However, you could switch these out for whatever material you want. So that's just another way that they've provided a way for us to customize our map, but given us a whole bunch of value right out of the box. So with that, we've got everything we need to get started with Drenches of War. We should be pretty much good to go from this point on. So great job following along. In this video, we've set up a custom map style with Mapbox Studio tied it to the map that we have in Drenches of War and set up our buildings with colliders so that we can actually use them. We've also gotten a quick tour of how the map route works with images, terrains and vectors and vector layer visualizers. And now we're ready to move on. This is Ben with devslopes.com and we'll see you next time.